All right. Hello everyone again. Uh, my name is Garrett, brand ambassador and sommelier at Zaka Mesa Winery. I'm joining you here on this beautiful Saturday afternoon um, to do a little demo on our different glassware that we use at the winery um, and just kind of different glassware in general and you know why the shape of the glass matters when it comes to drinking certain varietals. Um, first off, uh, we have a pretty big holiday coming up tomorrow, so happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there. Um, I can imagine this can be um, an even more difficult time to, you know, not to have much of a break uh, when it comes to being a mom. Um, you know, I have a beautiful wife who has been helping me do these live tastings. She is unfortunately not with me today um, doing this, so I am solo. So as normal, if you guys have questions, just put them on the Instagram and um, I will uh, get to them as we go through the tasting. Um, but she is a uh, mother of two. We have two beautiful girls, one five and one just turned one. Um, uh, this last April. So, you know, we, we keep busy and a uh, special happy Mother's Day to you, um, Lauren, and happy again, happy Mother's Day to all you moms out there. Um, I'm excited today. Uh, going to be tasting through a, a few different wines and just kind of going through some of the basics of, you know, why we use different glassware in the tasting room and why the glass really matters when it comes to tasting a wine properly. Um, to follow up, we still have our current promo that came out on Wednesday for Mother's Day. So if you want to treat your mom with some awesome wine, uh, we have the 2016 Roussan and our new 2019 Dry Rosé of Grenache as a mix or match promo, six or more bottles. You get 15% off and 30% off for club members, plus the normal $5 shipping. Uh, this deal ends tomorrow. So get it while you can. Um, we typically don't discount our rosé, so this is a great chance to get some rosé before it gets even hotter than it is now. Um, that promo will end tomorrow on Mother's Day. Um, schedule coming up. This Wednesday, I will be doing our cuvées. So we have our Z Cuvée, which is our classic uh, GSM blend, and our Cuvée Blanc, which is our white Rhone blend. Red Rhone blend, white Rhone blend, um, upcoming this Wednesday. And then the Saturday after that, I will be doing the Vineyard Tour, which was supposed to be um, today's uh, live tasting, but it got postponed due to some work that's being done at the winery. Um, but next Saturday, I'll be doing the winery tour. Tonight, we're doing a little uh, demo on our glassware. Um, so without further ado, um, in front of me, I have the three actual glassware uh, glasses that we use at our tasting room at Zaka Mesa. Um, uh, starting over here on my right, this is our Riedel Hermitage glass, the Rhone Hermitage glass which is designed specifically for Syrah and other Rhone varietals, but mainly Syrah. Um, next here is uh, our new uh, standard tasting room glassware that we, we just had um, received just before the, before the, the COVID-19 started. Um, so this will be the new glassware when you get back into our tasting room. Um, this is a little bit more of a classic Bordeaux glass. Um, but there's a reason why we use this one comparatively to the Pinot or the um, uh, Syrah glass on our, on our regular tastings because it has such a mix on it or these ones are, are more specific to the specific, uh, specific wine. Um, and on the far left, this is our Burgundian Pinot Noir glass. Um, can also be used for Chardonnay. Um, that we use for the Pinot lovers in our tasting room. So we do a reserve flight and we always use the uh, Riedel Rome glass. On our standard flight, we do the uh, our standard kind of more Bordeaux style glass, cab glass. And then um, 
for people that you know really want to get the best out of Pinot, we have our Burgundian Regal Pinot Pinot Noir glass. Um, so first things, uh, first thing when it comes to different glassware is how much you fill a glass. So I've filled these three glasses at the proper level you'd want it to do a glass of wine. Um, you know, sometimes you see the those glasses that are you know filled almost to the top. Um, it doesn't leave a lot of room for much to go on in there. You can't really swirl it. You can't let oxygen in. Um, so there's a reason why you fill it at a certain level and you want to fill it um, just above a third and below a half, um, if that makes sense, um, to you know, really get the best out of the, out of the wine. Um, the other thing is your palate your actual tongue. There's different sections of your palate and the these particular glasses are designed to hit a section of your palate before other parts and how it goes into your mouth and the wine spreads around. Um, so just a quick little biology lesson. Uh, the front, front of your tongue, the tip of your tongue, that is um, sweet. So that which the part of your tongue that detects sweet um, the front sides are more of your salty and savory. Um, middle sides is sour, so kind of the middle to the back end of your tongue. Um, typically wines with higher acid, you know, you get that's what the part of your palate that really salivates when you get something that's really, you know, higher in acid, really juicy. Um, and then the back of the tongue, back of the top part of your tongue, that is bitter. So those are the kind of the main parts when it comes to, to wine that, it, you know, when you're drinking. Um, obviously, you want the wine to hit all of that um, in your palate, but it does make a difference where it hits first. Um, Riedel does an awesome uh, demo, and this is how we, we first came across using uh, these glasses. Um, and we did an event called, um, Does the Glass Matter? Um, and they come out and they do a demo with the, the different styles of glassware and um, they'll do, you know, different varietals. So they'll do the same varietal in all three glasses. They actually even do uh, water and just the, the, the way the water tastes, which sounds crazy, um, is different. So if you have a few different styles of glassware at home, you know, please join me, you know, test it out. If you have a, a bottle of wine that you're drinking, I don't expect you to open three, four different bottles of wine, but if you have a particular bottle that you're enjoying right now and you have a few different styles of glassware, you know, test it out. Um, if you have a bottle of Pinot, you know, pour it in a Bordeaux, the Burgundian glass, uh, cab, whatever you have, you know, mix it up, pour it in, if you have a couple different glass shapes, um, test it out and then, you know, you can join with me in, in seeing the difference of these of these wines. Um, so we'll start off um, with the Rome glass. So if you notice uh, the glass shape itself, it's kind of a, a almost like a tulip shape. So it, it kind of starts off um, like a Bordeaux glass. Um, it's a, a, a little bit taller. Um, but it starts kind of with the same round bottom, but then a much different finish at the top. So it actually, it almost kind of cuts off on a, and it creates a, a tighter, tighter circle. Um, so for the, re the reason for this is um, you want the Syrah to start, um, start at the front and go right over the top of your palate to the tongue. So you get that the sweet part, which you really want to get the fruit out of Syrah, um, and then it goes to the bitter side because Syrah is you know a bigger, bolder wine. It hits the back and then works its way back to the front. Um, another uh, reason for the shape: um, aromatics. Um, Syrah tends to be a little more dull aromatically. Um, if you were to put Syrah, say, in a Burgundian glass, um, it would be kind of flat. So this really concentrates all those beautiful aromatics right here to the front. Um, the longer distance also, and this is a, a big reason for Bordeaux glasses, why, you know, the, the round shape kind of, it kind of maxes out lower towards the bottom and there's a lot of space between here and the top. Um, it allows the ethanol and the alcohol to, to wear off before it hits your nose. 
um, which helps um, the alcohol kind of wear off as well as the tannin, a little more oxygen space to get in there. And exactly like I said, um, goes right over the top, starts with that sweet part, hits the back of the bitter, and then rolls back to the front. Um, there's some, some varietals that, I mean, the glassware is not as um, big as far as the change, but there are certain varietals where it makes a huge difference. Um, one varietal that I really, really think there's really only one glass to really enjoy it is uh, Rusan. Rusan does so well in this glass and in every other glass, it's just a completely different varietal. Um, if you are, do like Rusan, you have Rusan, you really need to invest in one of these um, Hermitage glasses because it makes a huge, huge difference. Uh, I got a question in which model of Riedel are they? So um, this one, the um, the Hermitage glass and the Burgundian glass, um, these are the, um, I believe these are the, the restaurant edition. Uh, they're a little thicker on the stem. Um, they don't break as easy. You know, they're not as thin. Um, this, I think that it's the sommelier, the, uh, uh, sommelier series that is super like paper thin. Um, I've had, I have one of those and I'm, I'll be getting it to, to it later. And that's this guy. It is paper thin. Um, it's a beautiful glassware, but for tasting room purposes, you know, we need a, a little sturdier glassware because people, you know, sometimes people break, break glasses. It happens. Um, yeah, good question. Um, again, if you guys have any questions, just uh, type them in and I'll get to them as we go through. So again, uh, Syrah, we really want to get the fruit out of it. Syrah tends to be a little meatier, varietal, you know, it's a very, uh, can be really rich in tannin. Um, it can have more of that like dried leather and a lot of spice. So um, this glassware again shoots it right over the top, um, get that sweet and bitterness and then rolls back uh, to the front, um, getting to that, you know, that's the sour and then the, the salty savory note. Yeah, really cool. All right, let's move on to the Bordeaux glass. Probably the most common glass that you'll see, especially, you know, restaurants, um, tasting rooms, m most places use this glass. It's a little more universal. You know, if you're, if you're a, a place that does a lot of different varietals like we do, um, it's nice to have this glass because it kind of meets in the middle. You know, it's not perfect for Syrah and it's not perfect for Pinot, um, but if we did Syrah in the Burgundian glass, it would suck. And if we did Pinot in the Syrah glass, it would suck. So we gotta have something in the middle to, to do all the different varietals that we, we do. We also do Cab, um, Bordeaux blend. So um, this is a good glassware um, for you know multiple varietals, but specifically um, Cab. And uh, Kristen, our winemaker and I recently, we went through a demo of about six different uh, glass styles because we were looking to switch from the glassware that we use now in our tasting room and this was actually the one that we decided on um, recently so this is our, our new glassware um, so with uh, Bordeaux the Bordeaux glass like I was mentioning um, you know the the round shape stops pretty pretty quickly off the bottom um, and you have a lot more space from there to the top. You know, one of those reasons, again, is the alcohol, you know, the ethanol burns off uh, by the time it gets to your to your nose, which is really nice. So it kind of softens that. Cab tends to be, you know, a bit richer, bigger tannic uh, red wine. So this allows more oxygen um, to reach it as well before it hits your nose and palate. Um, so the shape of this glass, um, being that it's a, a little a little tighter um, is meant to go straight over the top of your palate and hit the bitter side and work its way back to the front 
Um, cab being tends to, to be a little more bitter varietal. So we're working towards its strengths and we're hitting that, hitting that note and working its way back to the front. And uh, yeah, just like I said, right over the top, hits that, rolls to the front, gets that salivation going, and then right at the end, you get that little, a little kind of sweet fruit note, um, like cherry liqueur. So again, you know, this is this is more the kind of traditional glassware that you're gonna or glass shake you're gonna see in most most places. Um, if you also notice that, you know, I have. All red wines in front of me um, I'm not doing any whites right now um, and you can kind of follow the varietal class of the red to do the white so um, if I'm drinking Syrah out of this glass then I will be sticking more to Rhone varietals when it comes to whites as well when it comes to um, using this glassware um, for Bordeaux, same thing. I'd be doing, um, you know, Merlot or uh, Sauvignon or Sauvignon Blanc when it goes to, comes to white. Um, at the end, like I said, I have a couple other glassware uh, here to the side that are a couple of my favorites. And just these two are uh, we don't use at Zaka Mesa, but um, for for Zaka Mesa purposes, um, these are the three that we use in the tasting room. Um, and then for the Burgundian glass, you know, this would also uh, be a good use for uh, Chardonnay, Pinot Blanc is nice in here as well, Gamay um, can be used in here. So while they are varietal specific, um, there's classifications that fall under that that work as well um, in the glassware. All right, going to Pinot Noir, um, the big fishbowl glass. So obviously the most drastically different from the other two glasses. You know, super round base, um, and a you know much bigger opening on top. Pinot is a, a very aromatic wine, so you got that huge space to work with to really get it swirling around, get that oxygen in there, get those aromatics flowing. Um, yeah, just so nice. Uh, Pinot just has such a great aromatic intensity. It's one of my favorite aromatic varietals. Um, this allows you to get plenty of aeration, you know, kind of uh, releasing some of those more delicate aromatics in Pinot Noir. Uh, and then when it comes to actually uh, how it goes in uh, on the palate, this one is going to start at the, the tip, work its way through the sides, and then back over. Because of its wide base, it enters your palate um, through the sides and the front. Um, so this isn't a direct shot over your palate. This is a direct shot to the, the tip and then to the sides. So much different um, entrance approach comparatively to the um, Syrah glass, the Hermitage glass, and the classic uh, Cab Bordeaux glass. Um, so Pinot very specific to its uh, varietal class again hits the front and then go works its way around the sides got a question uh susan says we don't have enough room in our house for all the different types of wine we think zaka mesa wines taste good no matter what we pour them in i agree i agree with you um they taste great in any glass but they can taste even better in the right glass so um, you know, sometimes it's funny, you know, you go to the, I poured at these wine festivals and they, they give you this little dinky, you know, uh, wine glass to go around and taste. And when people taste it and they're like, Oh my God, that's amazing. I'll be like, well, it'll taste, if it tastes good in that glass, it's going to taste amazing in the right glass. So, um, yeah, thank you. Zach makes it taste great in every glass, but taste to, can, can taste better in the right glass. Does anybody at home use uh, varietal specific glasses on, on any of, you know, when they drink wine, um, they're drinking a little more serious, not just, you know, casual, casual drinking. Um, if you go on the Riedel website, they actually have a specific glass for just about every single individual varietal. Um, 
thousands of them, thousands of different glass styles. It's crazy. But, um, that's, you would have to have a lot of cabinet space to do that. Uh, I, I kind of stick more to classification. So, you know, Burgundian, Bordeaux, you know, Rhone. Um, I have a white wine glass that I use that I really like, um, and another Pinot glass that I use, but, um, don't have enough room to have every single different bridal or enough money to have every single bridal. They're great glassware though. Nancy says, we love finding Zach and Mesa in LA, a little piece of home. Yeah, we uh, we definitely get our wine down in Southern California. That's our main distribution point for our wholesale. Thank you for supporting us out there in LA. We use the Riedel Universal for every day. The Spagla Burgundy for Pinot. Agrees, it helps. Yeah, the Riedel Universal, uh, that's a great glass. Uh, there's also uh, another one that I really like. It's called The One. It's literally called The One. And uh, it's supposed to be a universal glass. And that works really well um, for, you know, using different varietals. What do you, uh, Susan asks, what do you think about stemless glasses? Stemless glasses are bad. Do not use stemless glasses unless you're just having a, a casual you know, drink, you know, fun drink, whatever. Don't really, you know, not really focusing on the wine. Um, stemless is bad for a couple of reasons. Um, the reason why wine glasses have a stem is so you're not putting your hand on the glass itself. So when you do that, you're A, you're warming the wine with your hand. So you're taking it from its proper temperature. Um, you're also putting fingerprints on your glass, which then, you know, smudge, smudges your glass. Um, and then, um, so putting, putting your, having a, the actual stem, you know, you hold it down here you're not transferring any heat into your wine. Um, so yeah, typically I don't use stemless. Um, the only stemless I use are the Govino glasses and that's for like camping or going to the beach or picnic or whatever. They're like the acrylic plastic glasses. Um, and that's just because, you know, I'm just out at a picnic or beach, just having fun. I don't need to, you know, get crazy. Uh, with the glassware, and I definitely, when I'm out, I don't want to break my glasses either. Gary Johnson. Hey, Gary. Have a Pinot and just tried taste difference between Syrah glass and Pinot glass. Wow, really made a difference. Never realized it before. Awesome. Thanks, Gary, for trying that out. Um, huge difference, and that's, those, that's a good example right there is uh, Syrah and Pinot um, putting... Putting Syrah in a Pinot glass is a, is a huge difference, um, and vice versa. Uh, Dina Schwab, thank you for this presentation. Can't wait to visit Zach and Mesa as soon as we can travel again. Thank you very much. Very excited to hopefully get back to the winery soon. I was actually out there today. Uh, we started doing pickups by uh, reservation, by appointment, on Saturdays from 10 to 3, so... Um, if you are local and you want a reason to get out and get on the Fox and Wine Trail, um, give me an email, garrett at zachandmason.com, make an order, if, or if you have a club shipment you haven't picked up yet, and we'll set it up. You can come out there on a Saturday and pick it up. Uh, Mel says, some tasting rooms seem to use bur burgundy for everything. I assume this is just a pose to make their wine seem more upscale. You know, if the uh, at least around here because there's so much pinot um if you're in santa maria valley or santa rita hills they probably are using uh burgundian glasses because you know that's what their focus is pay attention to the tasting room and um what their main varietal focus is so typically if a, a producer let's say right down the road river bench you know they make a lot of pinot and chardonnay so their glassware that they use in their tasting room is a burgundian glass so, um, you know, just depending on where you are, they, if they have, typically they'll, they'll use a style of glassware that goes, is suited best with their, their varietal set, you know, um, like us, we do a lot of different varietals, so we have a couple different glass, glassware, um, but, you know, places that are more varietal specific, like the Just Pinot and Chardonnay, they're probably going to have the Burgundian glass. Um, Carrie, Carrie, Carrie Hill, we miss you guys. Thank you for doing these. Did you record this so we can watch it later? I missed the first part. Yes. Um, so 
you can watch this on Instagram for the next 24 hours. Um, and then after that, we put it on our YouTube channel. So you can go um, on our Instagram, there's a link, as well as our website um, to watch it later again on YouTube. Or like I said, it's on Instagram for um, 24 hours. So um, yeah, if you wanna rewatch the beginning of it, if you missed a few parts, please uh, go back and check it out. Uh, Susan says, you guys are really doing a good job with these virtual events. Thanks so much. They're both informative and entertaining. Thank you, Susan. Um, I've really enjoyed doing these since this has started. Uh, we, we jumped right on it. Um, as soon as I think our first one was like March 18th or 19th. Um, and you know, we had, we were forced to, you know, work from home starting March 16th. So I'm, I was really, um, looking forward to, you know, doing these and continue. I will continue doing these after we, we go back, um, to kind of more of a more normal operation at the tasting room and winery. Uh, it is something that, you know, I was considering before this all happened and we were kind of forced into it, but I really enjoyed it. And, uh, we'll keep doing these, you know, to reach out to, you know, not everybody lives close and can come out to a winery all the time. So it's nice to kind of reach out and communicate with you guys, um, if, since you can't always make it to the winery. Mel, how many glasses get smashed in the tasting room over a typical weekend? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, it varies. It depends how many bachelorette groups come in. <laughs> um, typically, uh, and this is all, actually all, honest, um, more staff break glassware than the actual customers. Uh, when we're cleaning them, when we're stacking them to you know take back to the cleaner, we probably break more than the, the actual customers do, um, to be honest with you. But um, I would say on an average weekend, probably maybe two to three glasses. It's not, it's not too much. Our, our glass is, is pretty sturdy. Um, I would say people, I've seen people actually spill, you know, knock over the glass and it not break and spill wine, then, you know, break all the time. Just depends. Just depends how many tastings you've had. Susan said, keep reaching out to us in Chicago. Absolutely. Jeff, happy Mother's Day, Lauren. See you on Wednesday. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right, so just to recap, going through this, first glass on my right, that's our, um, our Rhone Hermitage glass, designed specifically Syrah and other Rhone bridles. Tight tulip shape, um, good amount of space in between, you know, where the, the glass starts to curve and to the top. All that air in uh, kind of helps soften the tannin profile. This glass is designed to hit the front and go straight over the back. Uh, or dough glass, again, you know, with the round shape, little a lot of space in between, help uh, that alcohol kind of the ethanol to wear off, also to help tannin soften. Um, this glass is designed to go straight over the top of your palate to the back and work its way back to the front. The Pinot glass, big bowl shape, um, really, really lets out a lot of those aromatics, those beautiful aromatics in Pinot. This glass is designed to hit the front and go to the sides and then back over. So um, kind of the more three traditional glassware you're gonna see. Now I have a couple other glasses that we don't use at the winery that I per uh, personally really enjoy. Um, the first one here is the New World Pinot Noir glass. Now, if you notice, this glass is very similar to a classic Burgundian glass, but it has that extended lip and it also uh, kind of almost curves into a Bordeaux top right here. It curves and then straightens up right here. Um, love this glass for Pinot. Um, the classic Burgundian glass is great, um, but for New World Pinot, this glass is awesome. Um, similar effect of the Burgundian glass, it's bigger, it's wider, um, you get even more, those aromatics opened up, and then you have this top that helps fun it, funnel it, so you get it a little bit more concentration. 
Jeff asks, why did the winery close the large bur burgundy glass for the Blackberry Club? Why did the winery... Not sure what you're referring to on that. Um, we did have a Black Bear Society glass, but it was a, a more uh, classic Bordeaux, our normal tasting room glass. It just had the Black Bear label on it. So I'm not sure if that's what um, you're referring to. Um, and then the other glass that I really like at home um, is similar to the Bordeaux glass, uh, but it's a little more tight. If you notice the difference, if you can see it on camera there, um, how it really tightens up towards the top. I like really like this um, glass for um, a lot of different white varietals. I love it for Riesling, for Viognier, um, Grenache Blanc, um, even some uh, like uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Um, for whatever reason, this glass is really good for, for white wine. Um, you really just want to pour it to like right here and you have all this space right here to really um, let that oxygen hit it. Um, but for whatever reason, varietals like Viognier, Riesling, Sauvignon Blanc are really, really killer in this. Um, and uh, yeah, again, it's, it's a little more sleek. It has a little sleek shape to it. Um, well, thanks again, guys, for watching. Um, Check out the beginning if you missed it. Uh, I went over um, some of the, the basics and beginnings of you know why we use the different glass shapes. Um, please don't forget to say Happy Mother's Day to your mom or uh, your wife or you know any other mother that you know. Make sure they are recognized for this holiday because they deserve much, much more than one day out of the year to be celebrated. Um, moms make the world go around. So uh, thank you to all those moms out there. And I hope that uh, you have some great wine on Mother's Day. Um, our promo is still running uh, through till tomorrow. Uh, three bottle or you can mix and match or do, you know, six of one. It's the Rosé of Grenache and the Roussan. Um, $5 shipping plus 15% off for non-club members and 30% off for club members. Get your mom some rosé. It's getting hot. Moms love rosé. Uh, it's a nice dry rosé. Uh, Roussan, also a beautiful white wine. Just went over that one last Wednesday. Uh, take advantage of that while you can. Um, otherwise, I will see you guys on Wednesday, hopefully. I'll be doing our different cuvées, our Z cuvée and Z cuvée Blanc. Got another... I got a question from, sorry, um, if I'm saying this, uh, Octoc, O-C-T, Hawk. Are you using a particular brand? It says band, but I'm, I'm assuming it says brand of glasses. Um, yeah, at the, the winery, we use Riedel. Um, we also just started using the uh, Chef uh, Assemblier um, series glassware. Um, for me personally, I use Riedel mainly. Um, but I also, get the name of this one, uh, I'm not pronouncing this right, but it's Zwessel or Zwiesel, um, which is a really popular, um, uh, glassware producer. Um, Jeff, cheers, Garrett. Thank you. Cheers to you, Jeff. Thank you for, uh, always chiming in and watching. Um, again, uh, if you want to set up an appointment to pick up at the winery, uh, just email me, garrett at zachamason.com. Check our website for our calendar for upcoming live tastings every Wednesday and Saturday. Next Saturday, I'll be at the winery going through our production facility. should be fun. It'll be at 3 o'clock instead of 5. Um, and our June schedule for live tastings will be coming out next week. I'm working on that presently. If you guys have any ideas, anything that uh, a, a certain wine or, or a certain topic that you guys would like to hear, um, send a message on our Instagram. Let me know. Maybe uh, I'll put it into one of my live tastings. So um, thanks again, guys, everyone for watching. Happy Mother's Day. Again, don't forget to say Happy Mother's Day to your mom. She deserves it. And get her some rosé. Cheers, everyone. Thank you.
Alright, this is not ending.